Hi, you're listening to Sergeant Dorsey Speaks podcast produced by the Get Global Network. Thank you for subscribing to my podcast and be sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter, SGT, the abbreviation for Sergeant, SGT Cheryl Dorsey on Instagram and Twitter, as well as subscribe to my YouTube channel, SGT Dorsey Speaks, much like my podcast. I'm a retired 20 year veteran sergeant in the Los Angeles Police Department, and I'll be providing you with an insider's perspective on police policy, police culture, and police training. I'll pull the covers back, expose that thin blue line, and decipher police cold talk when we hear it. And I've got some deciphering to do for you this week. I'll also be discussing incidents that are making national headlines and how you might get involved and engaged in your particular communities. Also, I'll be offering solutions on how best to survive police encounters because at the end of the day, the goal is for everyone to go home safe. For more about me and my career, visit my website, www.sgtsherldorsey.com for information about my advocacy work as well as my 20 year career, which is chronicled in my autobiography, Black and Blue, The Creation of a Social Advocate. I talk about in great detail my 20 year career on the LAPD where I worked in patrol my entire career under the command of police chiefs, Daryl Francis Gates, Willie Williams, and Bernard Parks. I talk about real life encounters and adventures, if you will, during my 20 year career. I name names. Um, in some instances and in others, I use pseudonyms and aliases that I like to give folks. You'll be able to tell exactly who it is that I'm talking about based on the circumstances when I use an alias. And for those of you who'd like a sneak peek on my website, www.sgtsherldorsey.com, you can read the first chapter of volume two, Black and Blue, The Creation of a Social Advocate, as well as my next to be released book volume three in the black and blue series, black and blue creation of a whistleblower. Now let's get to it. Former Chicago police officer, Jason Van Dyke is on the move. Evidently this guy has been covering a lot of real estate since his uh, 2008 conviction in the deadly police shooting of Laquan McDonald. After former officer Jason Van Dyke's conviction, he was transferred to a federal prison in Rock Island, which is on the border of Iowa. He was then sentenced and sent over to Danbury, Connecticut. Now, when he arrived over in Danbury, Connecticut, three hours later, he got got. <laughs> and boy, was his wife hot about that. She's been very vocal uh, with regards to the, you know, the maltreatment that her husband is getting. And she is just outraged. Never mind, a young man lost his life because her husband acted in a way that was outside of police policy procedure lacked justification and then was exacerbated by a lie, she's bothered because somebody handed him his ass uh, in jail. Well, duh. So after going over to Danbury, Connecticut, they decided to move him again, this time to a federal prison in Otisville, New York. Now, this particular prison in New York is described as one of the 10 cushiest prisons in all of America. I don't know what happened over in Otisville that he didn't get to stay there, but yeah, he's not there anymore. Now, um, Jason Van Dyke has been moved and uh, it's been confirmed that he is uh, somewhere in um, Baltimore in uh, the state's intake center because that ass is now headed over to a state prison somewhere in Baltimore. So he's gonna be held in the intake center uh, for a little bit until he's transferred to state prison. So Mrs. Uh, Van Dyke, yeah, she better stiffen up her chin and so should little Jason because I would imagine, you know, state prison is tough anywhere, a lot tougher than federal. And if he can get God in federal, you know, yeah, he gonna have a hard way to go over there in that state prison. But anyway, um, yeah, he's getting moved around quite a bit. So that's that. The Oregon Supreme Court has recently banned police officers from asking random questions during traffic stops. Now this, you know, makes sense to me. This is a good deal because listen, you know, you've seen video, I've seen video where police officers will stop you for one thing, you know, like straddling the lane, having your tire go over and touch 
the line, you know, and then drift over just a little bit into the lane next to you so you don't stay within your own lane, right? We talked about this before, or, you know, you don't have any bumps on your bumper or you got dice hanging from your um, rear view mirror or the little fragrant trees that a lot of folks used to hang from their rear view mirror. All of these are reasons why an officer can stop you. So they got a reason to stop you, CS, though it may be, once they stop you, then you see officers asking questions that just have nothing to do with nothing. And it almost seems like they're really trying to provoke people, particularly young black males. You know, um, I saw a video where this young man, thankfully, he maintained his composure, but this officer stopped him and he stopped him for a traffic violation, minor, minor infraction. And then he started asking him, you know, questions repeatedly over and over about marijuana. Have you ever used it? Have you ever seen it? Do you smoke it? Are you sure? Well, you seem to be getting a little nervous now. And I get to ask these questions because now that you're acting nervous and now that you're bothered, you know, that seems suspicious to me. What? <sighs> anyway, we know what happens when officers push buttons, right? Because we saw that happen with Brian Insinia when he stopped Sandra Bland and he was all done with her. All he had to do was give her the citation, let her sign it. And he says, you seem like you're bothered. And she said, you're damn right. And then he said, put the cigarette out. And we know what happened after that. Time and time again, officers will stop you for a thing. Third tail lights not working, no front license plate. Uh, the reason Sam DeBose was stopped. Uh, third tail light, the reason Walter Scott was stopped. Jaywalking, the reason Mike Brown was stopped. And then you have officers who exacerbate a situation into a opportunity to use force and then deadly force because why they got scared or, you know, they come up with some cockamamie story that, that you threatened them. Or in the case of Betty Shelby, just Terrence Crutcher walking away with his hands in the air was frightening more than anything she's ever experienced in her life. And the person is gone. So they don't get to tell their side of the story. And that's why it's so important, family, for you to comply and complain. Don't say nothing. Let them do what they want to do. Let them ask what they're going to ask. Survive the police encounter. Comply and complain. And now in Oregon, they recognize that this is a real problem. And so the Supreme Court over there has told their police officers, listen, if you stop somebody for a broken taillight or failing to signal, if that's the reason, if that's your justification, if that's your PC, your probable cause, then you don't get to start asking a bunch of questions that are, quote, not reasonably related to the broken taillight or the failure to signal. You don't get to just start asking a bunch of questions when you pull somebody over because the Oregon Supreme Court recognizes that officers who do that are on a fishing expedition. You know, the ones that I call elephant hunters. They're trying to come up with something. And when you don't answer the questions because now they think you're acting suspicious because you're mad, rightfully so, because you're bothered, rightfully so, you know what happens after that. You wind up on the back end of a 148 PC here in California, resisting, interfering, arrest. That bogus arrest that winds up be being a district attorney reject because there's always insufficient cause to prove that that thing even occurred. But guess what? You didn't already spend 72 hours in jail if they arrested you on a Friday and you don't go to court till Monday here in LA, right? You didn't already spent 72 hours in jail. Your car got impounded and you have incurred all kinds of additional fees. You might have missed a little work. You might even lose your job. So the Oregon Supreme Court says officers here in Oregon, we don't do that foolishness. And I don't know how they came to um, create this ruling in Oregon. But for those of you who have an interest for the advocates out there, state to state, that are interested in stopping errant police officers from creating opportunities to put folks into the system, and in some instances, kill folks, you might wanna see how they came across this ruling over there in Oregon. You're listening to Sergeant Dorsey Speaks podcast. We'll be right back after this brief message.
Surviving the Oral Interview, Boot Camp for the Mind, by author Zimmy Williams, is a book about self-improvement, self-determination, self-reliance, and personal success. Surviving the Oral Interview, Boot Camp for the Mind, teaches skills in all areas of oral interviews, health and fitness, personal finance, and life management. Reading this book is truly a life-changing experience. The author of Surviving the Oral Interview, Boot Camp for the Mind, Zimmy Williams, is a retired LAPD sergeant and armed forces veteran, having served as a member of the United States Navy. Order your copy of Surviving the Oral Interview, Boot Camp for the Mind, by author Zimmy Williams. Get your copy today from online bookstores like Book Baby, Amazon, and other bookstores worldwide. Hey ladies, do you have frizzies, split ends, or are you running low on personal style? Well, the vote is in. Women like me who started going to Ursula Image Consulting have given their dull, boring hair flair, finally. So why don't you call my girl Ursula and book your appointment now at 626-494-0355. That's 626-494-0355. Or follow her on Instagram at Ursula Image Consulting. Now, when you contact Ursula, be sure to ask for that 15% discount off your first salon visit. She's located at the Head Trip Salon, 16 East Bellevue Drive in Pasadena, California. Come on, treat yourself. Your hair will thank you for it and you'll get lots of compliments. Follow Ursula on Instagram at Ursula Image Consulting. Schedule your appointment. Receive 15% off your first salon visit at Head Trip Salon, 16 East Bellevue Drive in beautiful Pasadena, California. And now we're returning to Sergeant Dorsey Speaks. I don't know how big the Seattle Police Department is, but one of their captains just got caught up in a sting by his own police department. Listen. I worked vice. <laughs> I was involved in prostitution stings as a decoy, right? A female out there, you know, standing on the street pretending to be a prostitute. Or, um, you know, when I was the officer in charge over in a Newton area, vice. It was my responsibility to coordinate these kinds of operations. And whenever I had a, an operation, I never did it without my captain knowing. Now, I don't know how many captains they have. I don't know. How could this captain not know that the that his department had a sting going that night. Either this guy has a real proclivity, a compulsion or something. He just could not help himself. And so uh, Randall Wollery, yeah, he's got some splaining to do. He's 53 years old. He's a 31-year veteran. And he propositioned one of his undercover officers. Yeah, he was going to give her $40 for sex. <laughs> Dude, that in and of itself is offensive and should be cause for... Um, being jailed. <laughs> $40 for sex? What? Anyway, Randall Wollery has got some splaining to do. Now, I don't know if there's a Mrs. Wollery anywhere around. Um, I guess he could just go home and say, you know what? After 31 years, honey, I just had enough and I'm just going to go ahead and pull the pin and she may never know. Well, unless some of her girlfriends read the newspaper and saw it like I did, then he's going to have a real issue. Randall was booked. And 30 minutes after being booked, he was released. And I'm sure his bail was probably little or nothing. And he may have even been able to get out on his own recognizance, which means show your ID, sign a piece of paper, and out you go. But nonetheless, he's going to um, have to have a conversation now with the Professional Standards Bureau. He's out on administrative leave. And listen, with 31 years on the job, he could go ahead and pull the pin. I know a lot of you, um, you know, wonder how do police officers get an opportunity to retire before being fired for offenses. And the reason is because there's a protocol, there's procedure, and sometimes officers have an opportunity to run down to the pension board and submit that paperwork or run down and uh, resign before administration has an opportunity to go through um, all the levers and processes that they um, must go through in order to fire a person. Can't just fire them on the spot. There's a process. So anyway, that's going on over in Seattle. 
Now, there's a Georgia deputy from the Paulding County Sheriff's Office. And this uh, deputy is actually a detective assigned to the juvenile division because, listen, if you like little kids, don't you want to work the juvenile division? He was involved in uh, teaching children about Internet safety. And so how come this knucklehead has been caught engaging in child molestation? Back in November, he was charged. uh, He being Steve Sorrells, 48 years old, Paulding County Deputy Sheriff. He's been charged with two counts of uh, child molestation and a violation of oath of office. He evidently, allegedly had sexual contact with a child. And so listen, if you're a sicko, if you have a proclivity, uh, you want to put yourself in the best place possible to have access to fresh victims on an ongoing basis, wouldn't juvenile division as a detective be the place to be? And then once you get into juvenile division, you ask to be assigned to the internet safety unit for children. So anyway, that should be an easy fix. He's been charged, two counts child molestation, one count violation oath of office. Police officers and stupidity are the gift that keep on giving. NYPD has a new police commissioner, James O'Neill, recently stepped down, retired, whatever you want to call it, because, you know, um, he kind of stubbed his toe with his force over there when he fired Daniel Pantaleo for the choking death of Eric Garner, albeit five years after the fact. I guess uh, Pat Lynch, a.k.a. The Mouth, must have, uh, you know, really got under James O'Neill's skin. He, that, or he just said, you know what? I don't need this. I've been around for 30 plus years. And he said, I'm out of here. So he hit the eject button and now they have a new NYPD commissioner. His name is Dermot Shea, D-E-R-M-O-T-S-H-E-A is his last name. And um, listen, family, he already coming in talking a whole heap of mess. He said that he vows Going forward, you need to know NYPD officers will get the respect that they deserve. And sounds to me like him and the mouth might be, you know, conjoined twins. I don't know. He's talking a whole lot of mess. I don't really hear him, you know, having a whole lot of anxiety or angst about, you know, how his officers are, you know, messing over people in New York. But he's going to make sure that his officers get the respect they deserve. And he's demanding accountability, not uh, for the community, but he's demanding accountability for violence against cops. Now, I don't know that there's wholesale violence going on over there on the NYPD against officers. I don't know. But I do know that there's wholesale violence (laughs) going on against the community. You know You see it, you hear about it like I do. So he's not really coming in with, you know, an appetite for doing right by, you know, black and brown folks in New York. He's coming in to kick ass and take names, as we say. So uh, the NYPD family, buckle up. And now it's time for Did You Know? As the holidays approach, I just wanted to share something with you because I know that holidays are very difficult for some. And so there's some things that you need to know And um, I wanted to share it with you. What you need to know, first of all, is that if you're having a difficult time, know that you are not alone. And psychologists and others have said that during these holiday periods where, you know, there's a lot of festivities going on and parties and, you know, folks are just wanting to hang out and have a good time. If you're having a hard time and you don't want to attend a party, don't. If you are grieving right now during the holidays, understand that pain associated with grief is natural. Be patient with yourself and reach out to folks who you trust and and care about to share whatever it is that you might be going through. And if you don't have anyone like that that you feel comfortable reaching out to, I want to share with you the number to the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. Now, I'm not saying that you're suicidal, but certainly they should be able to point you in the direction of someone who might help you with grief counseling or who just might be an ear and they are available 24 seven. So that number to call if you're having difficulties during the holiday is 800-273-8255. Remember you are not alone. You do not have to suffer in silence. If holidays are a difficult time for you, call 800 273 8255
1-800-273-8255. Well, that's it for now, family. Until next week, you know what's up. Be good and be safe. You have been listening to the Sergeant Dorsey Speaks podcast, produced by the Get Global Network. Sergeant Cheryl Dorsey is a television commentator, social justice advocate, and is also well known for her book, Black and Blue, Creation of a Social Advocate, an autobiography of her 20-year career as a black woman on the Los Angeles Police Department. The book details what she learned as an LAPD insider. Sergeant Dorsey can be contacted through her website, sgtdorseyspeaks.com, or via any of her social media sites like YouTube and Facebook. Take the time to subscribe to her YouTube channel and also subscribe to this podcast via major podcast networks like iHeartRadio, iTunes, Spotify, TuneIn, Spreaker, Stitcher, Google Podcast, and many others. The podcast is also available on wireless speaker systems like Alexa and Sonos.